Hey there, home chefs. Today we're making probably the best brunch item on the menu, French toast. It's bread soaked in custard, fried until golden brown, and finished with the most delicious toppings. Perfection. To really get the best out of the French toast, we need to start with the main ingredient, the bread. The best bread for the job is considered to be this chala bread. It's got the really tight crumb that is great for soaking up the custard, and you get it as a loaf as well, so you can cut it into your own thick slices. If you can't get your hands on a chala loaf, and only have pre-sliced supermarket options, be sure to still go for as thick as you can find. I would prioritize this over getting something like brioche, which is often recommended, as the thickness makes a bigger difference in the bread type, in my experience. So, grab your tea and let's get cooking. Slice off the ends of the loaf and save them to go with some soup. Then we want nice thick slices. Too thick and the middle stays dry, so two fingers is plenty. Slice as many pieces as you need, and then we leave them to dry out a bit. It's called pan perdu, or lost bread, as it works best with slightly stale old bread that soaks up all the delicious custard. If you're pressed for time, you can skip this step in a pinch, or better yet, stick it in a low oven for a few minutes to dehydrate. While that's happening, we can move on to our custard. Grab a wide container that can fit two or three slices. Then, we'll start with some cinnamon, add about two tablespoons, and I recommend using soft brown sugar, about 50 grams, for some nice color and texture and sweetness, and add a pinch of salt to help bring out the flavors. Add to that about 450 milliliters of double cream. You can mix in a bit of whole milk as well if you don't want to use all cream. And then we need four whole eggs added to that as well. It may be controversial, but I'm gonna say let's have no eggshell mixed in. I can be crazy like that sometimes, but let's go wild. And finally, to up the luxurious factor, some vanilla bean paste will go very nicely. Add a good dash of that, and then to mix it all together, we go to Chef Frank Proto, whose tip is to blend with a hand mixer to break down any clumps. Rich, creamy, and smooth sounds good to me. Reminder, all the ingredients and amounts are going to be listed in the description if you need them. And while you're there, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. With all that mixed together, it's bath time. Uh, not for us, but for the bread, which should be nicely dried out now. Dunk them in and let them soak on one side for a good four minutes before turning over. This is where the thickness really comes in. Most recipes will say a few seconds either side, but to have a really custardy toast, pieces need to be in there for longer to gain that. Thin slices fall apart like this before they've taken on anything other than a surface level of custard, but with a nice thick slice, we can give it a really good custard bar. Oh, steady. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Quickly get rid of any evidence, and after a minute or two longer on the other side, these guys are ready for the frying pan. Start warming your pan on a medium heat, but not too hot as we don't want to cook the eggs too quickly. Then get some salted butter in and let that melt until we start to see some light bubbles form. Then it's in with the soaked bread and cook on this side until it's brown and a bit crispy on the bottom. Then you can flip it over and allow for the same on the other side. You're probably looking at about five or six minutes on each side. Once they're looking golden brown and perfectly cooked, it's time for the best part, accessorizing. For this serving, I'm gonna show you one with everything going. First, stack two slices onto a plate. Then we hit that with a knob of butter to melt beautifully over the toast for some gloss. Follow that up with some gorgeous maple syrup for decadence. Time for snow then by dusting with a generous amount of powdered sugar. Now it's the sensible step as we add some fruit like blueberries and strawberries. Oh, let me fix that. Then, of course, it's a stunning dollop of whipped cream to sit atop. Sprinkle over that some cinnamon sugar because yes, we're going that extra. And to complete the look, a small mint leaf to crown this absolute masterpiece. This is gonna make any lazy Sunday morning instantly better. A glorious triumph from eggy bread. I can also recommend something a bit simpler with the cinnamon apple. Just cook up some apple slices in butter, maple syrup, and cinnamon for a deliciously warm apple pie-like French toast serving. Be sure to add lots of cream and enjoy it melting over the warm apple and into your hearts, or should I say stomach. I hope you've enjoyed this simple yet satisfying dish. So go on and surprise someone, or even yourself, with a plate of French toast this week. Whether it's with just some syrup, or even just some squirty cream, it's all gonna taste amazing. Stay tuned for more delicious recipes, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more culinary adventures. Until then, get cooking, and may the Zen be with you.